We are back with another solo pod today, and I just want to thank you guys for the last one that I did going over the point of view you stuck with it. All of the comments on that, I loved reading it and being able to interact. If you do not know what I'm talking about, I will have that link down below, but it was a really fun episode to do. So I know in that episode, I had mentioned a few different things like going back and talking about videos we did and what happened surrounding it for you to know what was going on that day. So let me know if you are interested in that down below, but let's get started. I actually had planned, especially since we just came back from being out of town, to go over how I set up us going out of town and go through all of the notes that I put together. And I can definitely go over that in a future episode if you would enjoy hearing about that. But I will also make sure any episodes or YouTube videos that we've done about traveling and your training and nutrition and staying on track are linked down below. But feel free to ask other questions because I would love to be able to go over that or do a YouTube video to really show my process to make sure that everything is nailed down. But I'd actually like to read something to you. This is me. This was a little bit of journaling that I did this morning uh, before we came on to the podcast, and I thought that it would be cool, if that's the right word, to go ahead and read this. So I will get started. I woke up anxious. Well, Maybe I went to sleep anxious, subconsciously at least. Or was it conscious? I got a ton of things done that I knew had to be done to start this week, but then it felt like I pushed it all away by not getting to sleep early enough. It's the human side of me. I felt like I didn't have enough time for myself yesterday, so I got my revenge. I stayed up late laughing with my husband, and I can't stay too mad at that, of course, but we both knew we should be in bed by now. Sometimes that's how it goes, but then I woke up late. I probably hate that feeling the most. Not the aspect of sleeping in, but sleeping in past an alarm. I like to plan, and I had a plan for the day. A plan that basically had to be executed perfectly for everything to get done. I knew it was a big day. I knew it would be a push. But I chose revenge in the moment. So I woke up late. And anxious. You know, I really do love waking up early. I never thought I would be that person, but I am. I love being up before everyone else is up, before anyone needs me, and I can need me. Oftentimes, I spend that time working, and that's completely fine by me. It's so I can allot myself other time throughout the day. I wake up early to work so I can take a one- to two-hour break to walk the dogs, make breakfast, and sit down with my husband and eat a meal. When I wake up late, I wake up behind. It feels like I need to cut my morning all up and use it to make the whole day bad. I woke up anxious. This normally happens when I know I've overbooked my day or I didn't get done what I needed to the day before. Whether that's due to something coming up or just dilly-dicking around, that's what happens. I've gotten better at this recognizing what's possible in a day that is, but just like training, sometimes you have to get right up to the line or even push and shove over the line to know where that is. I thought about skipping my walk. I thought about skipping breakfast or just throwing my hands up. Two hours later than planned. That's how late I woke up. But I needed it. That's sometimes the other hard part, being mad at yourself for needing rest or anything really. Shit. The first words out of my mouth this morning, as soon as Alex woke me up and told me the time. How on earth was I going to make today happen? I remind myself quickly, you needed the rest, that's why you rested. Yes, you could have gotten to sleep earlier, but you might have needed that time too. So I breathe. I look at my schedule on my phone, and the line is showing I should be halfway through a workout already. Okay, that can't happen this morning. And that's exactly why I made two blocks for training. I knew sleep might take the priority. So that's moved to later in the day. What else needs to happen? It was time to take the dogs on a walk, but I felt the anxiety eating at me. Maybe I do skip it. No. Take 30 minutes at your desk, Sue. Collect yourself. Look at your list. Look at your calendar. I rearranged it, and I started on the new order. I've been here before, many times, and as it turns out, guilting and hating myself didn't help much. But what I did learn is that momentum does help. So I tackled anything that would take five minutes or less. 
Well, maybe some things took 10 minutes, but I find myself with 11 things crossed off. I message Alex and I let him know that breakfast is being pushed back around 45 to 60 minutes. Just telling him I'm overwhelmed helps a little. He says he is too, so that means today is about kindness and communication. I head out on the dog walk, and instead of the 30-minute path, I go for the 15. I focus on breathing and trying to ground myself, which ends up feeling quite difficult as I picked the wrong time for this walk. I'm not normally out at this time. I'm out here much earlier. Bikes and scooters screech by as kids and parents make their way to school. The dogs get a little bit too rambunctious, and they forget that two 100-pound-plus dogs walking their owner instead of their owner walking them doesn't make them look as friendly as they think. Breathe. I get back home, and I start on breakfast. Shit, I forgot to order groceries. But I can improvise. I don't need to let this derail me. I'm working for momentum, remember? Breakfast wraps up and I feel the nerves creeping. I know that Alex and I have to have a quick meeting, but I start to remember all the things piled up on my list at my computer. I hope he doesn't want to have it now. He asks if we can meet in an hour. Yes, that's perfect. I can do a lot in an hour. I set my timer and go. Again, I started with the easy. I crossed off five more things and then five more. Before I know it, the alarm is going off, reminding me it's been 60 minutes. I feel much more at peace. My breath isn't controlling me. I'm controlling it. So the reason I wanted to read that to you guys was because first I wrote it and because looking at today and really just looking at everything for travel going into this past week. And a lot of you guys know, if you regularly listen to the podcast of all the other things that have been going on in life, and it can feel very hard to feel in control of something that you have so little control of. And I know that especially within like the health and fitness world and within diet and nutrition, People sometimes find control in the wrong way where they try to have so much restriction and control everything that they do and eat that it puts them in a pretty negative headspace. And I want to be clear that I understand there's a distinction between the two, but I do think that being able to have things that pull you down and ground you are so extremely important, even if those do fall into the realm of health and fitness. I could make a lot of excuses today if I wanted to, and most people would probably understand, but hear me out. Maintaining some basic habits like getting movement in, doing a little bit of meal prep, and getting in enough sleep isn't just about checking the boxes. It's like having your own secret weapon for those extremely tough days. You've got to have a baseline standard for what you'll accept as a bad day. That's what defines the difference between someone who is all or nothing and always starting over and someone who can have consistency. And consistency is perfectly imperfect. It's not about being perfect. It's about doing the thing more times than you don't do it. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. So while bad days happen or anxious days happen, and sometimes they're out of your control, control, and sometimes you played a role in it, you have to be able to have some sort of tool to get you into the place to allow you to feel your best. I knew today, even though it was going to be a push and it was going to be a big day, and it basically had to be executed perfectly to check everything off my list, when that all felt like it was crashing down when I woke up two hours later than I had planned to wake up, I could have easily let that continue to crash down and roll into a really, really shitty week to say the absolute least. But because I was able to recognize and give myself grace of I needed that sleep and I can still use that instance and that situation to really learn and grow from. And what I mean by that is, of course, yes, I could get to sleep earlier, but we also need to be conscientious of 
the fact that we are human. And while I could have gone to sleep earlier and I even knew it in the moment last night, I chose not to. So to rewind a little bit more to see how I could set myself up, it comes to the week before and the travel that we had. And within the travel, we've been playing around with flight times that work best for us because the extremely early mornings are difficult because you actually end up burning most of the day anyways. Let's say you even get to your location earlier in the day, then it puts you in a place that you had to be up so early for the flight, and then you were on flights all during the day and the morning as my most productive hours, that it would just bottom me out. And even if I got to the place that we are going, I wouldn't have a lot of energy to even do anything. And then it came into like, okay, let's look at some midday flights or some late afternoon flights. Um, and that left us getting in, and especially because we took a late flight going to Colorado, even with gaining some time back, we didn't really get to our Airbnb and settled until closer to 1 or 2 a.m. And so that put us in a situation that we would have to sleep in to be able to kind of make up for that time to put us in a better position. And so being able to look at these aspects and seeing, all right, for the flight there, that was a decent flight there. I was decently happy with how that went. Um, and Friday, I did have time and allow myself to sleep a little bit more to kind of catch up, so to speak, on what the day before was. And then it went into the next few days while we were traveling of um, Friday, we ended up staying up a little bit too late. And again, the time change is going to um, come into that and just being so out of routine. And so we were trying to get work done while also being present of why we were there and the people that we wanted to see while we were there and being conscientious of what we needed for ourselves. And whenever I travel, honestly, my my most toxic trait is that I disassociate Associate. And I have such a hard time focusing with work because I'm not in my I'm not in my office and I've worked so hard on association, especially with working from home, to be able to be like so present when I'm in my office and when I'm not in my office to be able to turn it off. And that has been such a blessing. But in the cases that when we travel, it becomes a curse of having a very hard time focusing. And so knowing that, I tried to get done as much as I could before we left to give myself some space throughout that time. But then traveling on a Monday is extremely difficult for us. And so now we know we're not going to travel on a Monday unless it is something that we are going on a vacation and we're leaving on a Monday, something to that degree. But Monday travel, that was the first time we had done it in a long time. And it just solidified the fact that Monday travel is really out of the question for us because Monday is some of our heaviest work days and being on a plane for a majority of that was quite difficult. So not only did we have to move around our meetings to later in the week, which shifted our normal schedules even more so. So, but we had to get up at 3 in the morning to get on our flight. We did get home by around 2 p.m., which was awesome, but we were both basically brain dead. Um, but we had to just kind of pull on our big girl pants, pull on our big boy pants, and get after it. And if some of you guys saw my story, I'll just go ahead and read it because, you know, stories are only 24 hours here. So um, I had posted last night about what my day was. I said, what a day, 3.30 a.m. wake up, head to the airport at 4, flights from 6 a.m. to 1 p.m., and got some decent work done on the planes, which I will say that is always an if because Wi-Fi on planes at this point is so unreliable. So on the way there, we did not have Wi-Fi for like one and a half of our flights. And thankfully on the way back for the longer flight we did, but the second flight we did not, and it it can be quite difficult because, you know, you can't get out your laptop till you get to a certain point. It's a whole thing. But home around two, pick up the dogs, spend some time with my parents, answer some check-ins, ate and went for a walk with Alex, showered and washed my hair. This is big. Unpacked all suitcases and put everything in its correct spot. This is also big. All laundry from the trip is done. Put away laundry from trip 
from before trip, all the dishes cleaned, packages opened, put away, and boxes broken down. And then I was finishing the evening with some emails and making sure I was ready for tomorrow. And I said, I'm really, really proud of myself. I knew I didn't have the capacity to be at my desk for the whole evening. So I did other tasks I needed to do while still getting done what made sense. This was a form of self-care. Discipline is a form of self-care. And with that day, that was an instance of getting home and recognizing I had so much to do. And I started to kind of get the, the Sunday scaries on Monday of thinking about how big the day was going to be and how I really just wanted to go home and go directly to sleep. Um, but because I knew I wasn't going to be able to give clients or to give our staff the the version of me that they deserve of someone who is very present and can either articulate, listen well, or create space for them, I knew that that's not how I should spend a majority of my time. So I got through what made sense, got back to a few check-ins, and even decided to do them in uh, the kitchen because I was feeling anxious to go up to my office and felt like I was going to get overwhelmed by how much was going on. So I was able to sit in front of a window, which was helpful for me being in the sun and to just be able to knock out a few things because as you could tell from what I read at the beginning of this, just being able to get a few things off my list kind of calms that anxiety. If I start to have everything building up and the list starts getting longer and longer and longer and just being able to take some action on it helps so incredibly much or organize or even prioritize what needs to be done because I used to get in such a bad habit of making these ridiculous lists that had no priority to them. And that's also why I switched to like electronic lists because I used to be a paperless person because I can move around each task based on the priority and set myself up. And I've gotten so much better at understanding what needs to happen first, which has been a huge help. But after I got that done, again, I just wanted to sit on the couch and do nothing. And I recognized, hey, if the laundry doesn't get done and and these suitcases don't get unpacked, the rest of the week is going to be clinically insane. There's no way these are going to sit here to the weekend. And over the weekend, I already have stuff I need to get done. So I can't leave it for then. So being able to get all of those things done did really set me up for success today. But it put me in a place where, again, I needed the rest and I wasn't able to do absolutely everything. But because, again, I've gotten better at prioritizing tasks and I am very thankful for the ability to have such flexibility in my schedule that I was able to move things around and set them up for what made the most sense. Now, was today everything that I had originally planned it to be? Maybe not. But the thing is, I was able to still make a great day out of it. And right now, it's only 2.37, where <laughs> in the past, this would have been of me still sulking and pissed that I woke up late and really just running a narrative in my head that didn't need to be there, but I was able to breathe, give myself a little bit of grace, understand where I had a, a play in this of choosing that revenge while also reflecting on what happened this past week to see where I did need to give myself grace or where I did need to to improve of either scheduling or what my expectations were of myself. Because I think that's another huge thing of through the travel that we have done for work, it's been able to allow myself, and I even talked about it here, of how honest I need to be for what I can get done in a day, where I used to, again, really overpromise and it wasn't out of a place of just um, I, I'm doing this and I'm not actually going to get it done, but I just want this person to like feel good about me promising I'm going to get it done or saying I'm going to get it done. But it was truly having the mindset that I could get anything done in a day if I really just worked hard enough. <laughs> so being honest with myself about what capacity I have, and especially from the tasks that I'm going from. So I cannot say enough about that, of being able to understand of, hey, after a whole travel day, I don't have the capacity to be at my computer. So I can't expect myself to get a ton 
ton of computer and very focused work done, but I can get done chores around the house and get things set up and clean my hair and all that stuff. So being able to have honest conversations with yourself while giving yourself grace and still having space to say where you personally need to get better, I think is the only way to keep taking the step forward and to keep taking a step that you're going towards improvement in those instances. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. And I was also thinking about one other thing before wrapping up here, and it was the aspect I was talking to someone about how I do a lot of what I want. And uh, I was thinking about the song. I couldn't find what the song was. So if I think about it, I'll try to add it to the show notes, but I couldn't find it when I was searching it. But the one lyric that was stuck in my head was like, doing what I want is how I stay alive. And I feel very connected to that of I do do a lot of the things that I want to do and I enjoy a lot of the things that I do throughout the day. But I think that where there is a little asterisk there that we need to be aware of is being able to be aware of what it means by saying doing what I want. And I always try to look at that of there is doing what you want in the interim and then there is doing what you want as far as what you want for your life and being able to see that as a future destination. And that comes in play with something like delayed gratification and being able to understand what you're working towards or what your goal is within the tasks that you are doing. So to plainly say it, I actually don't do everything that I want in a day, but I actually do do everything that I want for my life in a day. And being able to see it through that lens is so helpful because there is instance of even just when we were traveling, we got to the the place around 1 or 2 a.m. and I decided to wash my face because I did have some makeup on from earlier in the day. Did I want to freaking wash my face at 2 a.m. after a full travel day? Absolutely freaking not. I wanted to fall onto the bed. But what I do want is to be able to have skin that I can feel confident in and skin that ages with me in a way that, again, I feel confident in. And so in order to get what I want of that nice skin, that is going to take me doing something I don't want, like washing my face at 2 a.m. So being able to look at things through that lens of seeing, hey, why am I doing this thing and what is the reason for it? Because throughout all of this, I could also just throw up my hands of today is a lot of things I don't want to do. But in reality, it's a lot of things I do want to do but they just aren't coming to fruition right this second. So being able to have that long-term vision paired in with those honest conversations and being able to give yourself grace is how I am getting through today and how while I woke up anxious, I will not be continuing the day anxious and I will not be going to sleep anxious. And even if I wake up tomorrow anxious, I know that I can have a path and a plan to figure out what the next steps are and recognize that I am just a human going through this, figuring it out. But I can also have rest assured that I am a human and I do want to figure it out. And what that means is just putting in the effort each and every day to figure out what it is I'm trying to figure out. So that's where we will leave things today. We'll keep it short and sweet, but thank you guys so much for joining. And of course, I will give you a rundown on things you got to keep in your mind. Of course, if you haven't been caught up on past physique development podcast episodes, you should go do that. And we will have some of the most recent ones in the show notes and some that you guys have really enjoyed, like the overrated and underrated. And as always, if you have any questions or things you want to submit for the overrated and underrated for us to go over in a future episode, you can just comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube, or there is always going to be a form in the show notes or the description box that you can submit any questions that you have so that we can get to them. And of course, I cannot leave without reminding you about the Banties. Now, we are sold out of all of the physique development, original design one, the blue design, and then we are sold out of a few sizes of the champion, I believe, 
the medium for sure, and I would have to double check on the other ones, but I do know, I think we're sold out of extra large. I think we have some large left, some extra small, and some small of the champion. And then the new designs, the physique development with the dead head, the skull on the back, every color we have at least one of every size. So if you have no idea what I'm talking about and you're listening to this instead of watching this, if you're watching it, then I'll throw up a picture here of us looking sick in some panties. But if you are listening to this, then just shoot me a DM and I will send you anything and everything that you need to know about the panties so that you can pick one up and you can rep PD in the coolest way possible. Is there anything else that I need to tell you guys? Thank you because you guys have continued to reach out to me for everything that is going on with my family and with my dad and just allowing me to have space and honestly be vulnerable and navigate through all of this in a a more public way, which I cannot thank you guys enough for that. Um, As of right now, we're still really waiting for what the next steps are and kind of figuring out what the answer is. So if I ever don't give updates, um, it's because there are like updates still forming. But if you guys are interested in keeping up to date, my mom does have a caring bridge that she updates pretty frequently. And it's basically like a Facebook page for situations like this. So um, if you are interested in that link, then you can comment below or DM me and I'm more than happy to get that link to you um, so that you can get caught up on everything. And my mom always shares things that they're asking for specific prayer requests or giving specific praises of things that did happen. But I will say some really fantastic freaking news is my dad's swelling is basically all the way gone. And if you didn't know, he had gained around 30 pounds in like water weight and swelling right before we left on our vacation. And it was it was it was honestly pretty jarring and scary to see and to feel the swelling and to to just know what he was experiencing to the fact of like there was so much swelling that he a lot of his clothes didn't fit and then even like touching his face like his arms were so swollen he couldn't get his hands to his face so that was obviously very difficult to see but after this most recent chemo cocktail of them having him in the hospital for what was it, four or five days and chemo twice a day his arm swelling went down a ton um, before we left on this this past weekend. And when I came back to pick up the dogs, like his leg swelling was completely gone. So that is such a blessing. And it was so incredible to see. It it made me so, so happy. But now his weight is actually going down even more. So trying to make sure we keep weight on, especially since we know that there will be more chemo treatments. Um, And last time he did lose a significant amount of weight. Um, That was, again, very scary to see. So hoping just to keep him at a good weight. So there was some Krispy Kreme donuts had last night. Um, And basically anything he says he's craving, we will make sure that he gets. So that should be all for me today. I hope to catch you guys in the next episode, but thank you guys so much for listening, watching, supporting everything that you all do. We'll see you next time.